Hey, if you're looking to start a pest control business and you need a set of financial projections, maybe for a potential lender, maybe an SBA loan, or maybe maybe you're presenting to a potential investor and you need to show a financial forecast, then you've come to the right place because we have built a financial projection template built specifically for a pest control business. Now, I'm going to show you kind of two variations or two different ways that we filled out this template. So it's, it's really the same template, but we've got one version I'm going to spend most of my time on for a single unit pest control business. But we also know that that it's kind of fun to dream about multiple units or or maybe you already have one unit and you're looking to to add a second location of your business so maybe you're already operating a business in in one city you want to open a second or third location in, a, in another geography this template works for multi-unit or multi-location pest control businesses so I'm going to walk you through how to fill the template out. Again, spending most of my time on focusing on a single unit because that's what you're going to probably need to present to you know, a potential SBA lender, for example, if you're looking for a loan to get the, the business off the ground. Now, you might have plans to grow in the future. I would recommend that you just show the SBA lender the first unit you're going to build. You can you can tell them, you know, if things go well, you want to expand in the future, but don't scare away your SBA lender. <laughs> don't don't show them your your plan for 20 locations in the next five years. That that will probably scare them away. So let's focus on getting the the financing you need for the first location, and then we'll go from there. All right. With that out of the way, I just want to mention the link to this template is in the description of the video below. So you can go to the description, grab this template. And if you stick around to the very end of the video as a thank you for sticking around to the end, I'm going to send you a coupon code. I'm going to give you access to a coupon code um, so that you can take a discount on this template. And before I dive in, just a little bit more background. So my name is Adam Huxima. I'm the co-founder of Projection Hub, and we help entrepreneurs and business owners create financial projections for potential investors and lenders. I spent a little over a decade as an SBA lender myself, where during my time as the executive director, I, I oversaw the approval of 1,500 SBA loans to all sorts of different businesses and industries. And so I really have that hat, that SBA lender hat on, or that business lender hat on when I'm thinking about how do we need to create these projections in a format and a structure uh, that's going to be lender friendly. And so that's, that's our goal here. All right. So with that out of the way, let me dive into how this template works. Okay, so we are starting here on the at a glance tab and you can see kind of once you've finished filling in the inputs of your various assumptions, you are gonna be able to see some nice graphs and charts and things you can pull into a business plan or a pitch deck for investors. And then you're gonna have a five-year income statement summary, a five-year cash flow summary, a five-year balance sheet summary, and then the income statement, cash flow, and balance sheet all broken down by month for each of the five years. So the SBA is going to typically require the first two years to be broken down monthly. We just go ahead and give you the whole five in case they ask for that. So you have all of that level of detail. Now, in order to produce these reports, we have a little bit of work to do. So we need to come back to our input assumptions tab here. So the first thing you need to know about these input tabs, every cell that's highlighted in blue is an assumption that you can change. Okay, and so I know some of you, Excel is not your thing. You might be feeling overwhelmed already. I'm gonna to try to walk you through it and, and make it easy for you, but I did just wanna mention that if you get through this and you're like, you know what, I just want somebody fill, to fill this out for me. I want someone to just handle this for me, get it ready for my SBA lender and, and make sure I put my best foot forward. We do offer that service. We offer a template fill out service uh, where you can tell us about your plans for the business. We'll fill the model out for you and then, you know, record a video that walks you through the, the, the numbers and gives you confidence. So when you're presenting to a lender, you have ownership of those numbers. You understand the numbers. So if that's something you're interested in, you can reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com. Leave us a comment in the comment section below and we'll help you out with that. Okay. With that out of the way, let's see how this works. So you can change the start month here, you can set a starting cash balance. So let's say this is a startup, so our starting cash balance is zero. You can set location one opening on month one of the model. You've got accounts receivable. 
Uh, so opening AR, opening accounts receivable is probably going to be zero because it's a startup, right? So you won't have any, no one's going to owe you money yet on day one. This average day sales outstanding. So this means how many days does it take you to collect payment after you provide the service? So if you are doing pest control, for example, in a, for residential, and maybe you're just doing like on call, like, you know, somebody's got a wasp problem, yellow jacket problem at their house. You come out and you spray for that, right? You're going to charge them when you do that service, right? But you might have other customers. So let me step back. You're going to charge them when you, you do that service, right? And so if that's the case, you're going to put average day sales outstanding as one. It's going to take you one day to collect. You're going to collect on the same day that you provide the service. Now, you might also have some clients that you go and you spray for you know pests on a regular basis maybe a monthly basis maybe a quarterly basis whatever that is so you might you might do that and then uh invoice them and then they pay that invoice but they might not pay the invoice for 20 days 30 days right uh, after you provide the service so you might have some mix of a payment that's coming 30 days after the service, some mix of payments that come the same day you provide the service. All in all, maybe it, a it averages out to 15 days on average, perhaps. So that's why we have that set to 15. So you can, you can make adjustments to that. On the accounts payable side, this is how fast you pay your bills. So our opening accounts payable is going to be zero. Again, you're not going to own anybody on day one. Average days payable is outstanding. We set that to 15. Some of your expenses you're going to get an invoice for. You might wait 20 days, 30 days to pay, right? Maybe some of your suppliers you give you terms and you don't have to pay, pay right away. Or you put things on a credit card. You pay for it today. You put it on a credit card, but you don't pay the credit card for, you know, a month, right? And so when the cash actually leaves your account, your bank account, that's, that's when it's officially paid, right? So... Picking something like 15 days probably makes sense there too. All right, current inventory balance. Again, we're a startup, so we're going to say zero. But starting inventory for each location, we're saying initially, day one, we're going to buy $500 worth of initial inventory or supplies. And then we're going to keep, I'm going to put this at 100%. So this basically means we're going to keep one month of supply of inventory on hand at all times. And the model will just figure that out for you. In terms of equity investment, here we're saying we're going to put in equity investment of fifty thousand for the first or in the first month here to help cover startup costs. So what are the startup costs going to be? Well, we've got uh, leasehold improvements. So let's say we're going to rent an office, maybe with a warehouse to store inventory and supplies, and but that office needed some work, and so we're actually going to do thirty five thousand dollars worth of improvements, remodeling to get that ready for. Uh, opening day. And then we can set the life expectancy in years. This just helps us figure out how to calculate depreciation. So if we say 20 years, it just means that that's going to be depreciated. That asset's going to be depreciated over the useful life of 20 years. And then you can just always select month one. If if this is for a startup, you're, you're going to purchase that in month one. Now, Month one, you're also going to need some tools and equipment. And, you know, of course, depending on what you want to do, you could probably spend a whole lot more than $10,000 on tools and equipment, or you could probably spend less So to get started. So, you know, figure out exactly what services you want to provide, what, what equipment you're going to need to be able to do that, and you enter that number in here. Now, you could also add a vehicle. So if you're going to purchase a vehicle, you could add a vehicle in here. You can select from this drop down vehicles. I am going to assume for the sake of simplicity that you're going to lease vehicles in this model, but you could purchase a vehicle here and you'd want to add that in, add the price of that vehicle in here. And then let's say we also buy $10,000 worth of software, computers, printers, that sort of thing, electronics that you might need for the office. And then we're going to look at our loan. So let's say we have a startup loan here of $75,000 and it's, we're going to get it on month one. We're going to make our first payment on month two. We're going to have an interest rate of 10% and a term of 120 months or 10-year term. 
All right, so that's on the input page, the uh, assumptions page. Now let's look at the revenue and cost of goods sold. Okay, so for this one location, let's say uh, we are going to uh, add one technician right off the bat. So maybe you're the owner, but then you're also going to have an employee technician. So you're going to add one in month one of the business. You're going to add a second technician here in month six, a third technician in month 13, and then another technician every the first month of every year up until the end of the five years. This is a five-year model. So, you know, and you don't have to add six technicians you, or you could add 10 or you could add one ever. You know, you can adjust this as needed, but this gives you an example of how you can model in adding new technicians as you grow. From there, we're going to say, okay, the maximum weekly billable hours per employee. So this is the number of hours that you actually think your technicians are going to be doing billable work or basically that they're getting paid for, right? So it's probably not going to be, not every minute of every day is not billable, right? And so let's let's say it's 35 hours of the maybe 40 hour work week and then your rate per billable hour. So you need to think about this because let's say you've, you're charging $50 every time you come out to a house and just do like a maintenance spray and it might, you know, it might take, it might take 10 minutes to do for the technician. You are, you're, you're, but you're charging 50 bucks for that, right? So let's say it actually takes 10 minutes to do the, to do the job, but it took 20 minutes to get there. And then it takes 20 minutes to get to the next place and the next home. And then 10 minutes again to, provide that service. So within one hour, you're only doing 20 minutes of actual spraying or whatever, the, you know, treatment, but between the travel time, maybe you're saying on average, I can get two jobs done for every hour at 50 bucks a, a service. So my actual billable rate here is a hundred dollars an hour. Okay, so that's that's the idea. Now you might have other, you know, other services where like you're coming out for a one-time, you know, problem again. Like a there's a yellow jacket infestation and technicians out there for an hour trying to to fix this. Now that might be, you know, that might be a $150 service fee because maybe it's $100 for the time, but $50 for the travel time as well, right? So you're still trying to you're trying to get some billable hour rate. So you can set kind of what you want that goal to be, but but this is what you're shooting for. You want to enter in what's that billable rate per hour that you're hoping to get for each of those technicians. So that gives you a base revenue per employee per week of 3,500. This allows you to kind of give a ramp up period for new employees. So if you say, okay, I'm going to hire a new employee, but I think it's going to take a few months to actually get them up to billing out 35 hours. So if you if you say it's going to take three months, the way the model will work is in the first month, they're basically going to be like 11 hours or one third of 35. So 11 to 12 hours worth of billable. The next month, they'll be 23 hours billable. The next month, they'll be up to 35 hours billable. And so you can kind of spread that out over time. And then this is the annual rate increase in terms of, you know, in year two, we're going to be charging $105 an hour. Or increase that, that rate by 5% or whatever percentage you want. Okay, that's the revenue side. Now on the cost of goods sold side, we have kind of two sections here. We've got the direct labor and the job materials. So for the direct labor, let's say we're going to pay our technicians $2,600 a month plus... 8% of their wages here we have set as benefits. So this is just grabbing this number, whatever number you put in there, and it's multiplying by 0 0.08 to say, okay, we're going to have some additional benefits here. Now, you want to make sure that this 2600 is is kind of the all-in cost. Now, this could be, maybe you're not paying benefits, but it could be your portion of taxes 
right? So we could say taxes and benefits. Okay, so that's that's labor cost. And then on the material side, we, what we want here is uh, job materials used per employee per month. And so here's, here's how we do this. I have this little box out here and I can say, all right, I want to assume that on average, our job materials cost 10% of our revenue. So if we're doing pest control, the, the supplies, the spray that we're doing, you know, the, the, the consumable materials that we're using on the job, we want to know how much that's going to cost. Okay, so if I say 10%, then this table, this little field is going to do the math for me. So it's it's white here because I don't want you to change this. I want you to leave that as it is. It's got a little calculation here working. And so if you change this and say, no, it's actually only 5%, you can see that automatically changes. So I'm going to set that to 10% for now. Okay, so that is it on the revenue and cost of goods sold. And let's look at the other operating expenses. So you can set various operating expenses in kind of three different ways. You can set them as a percentage of revenue, a per location fixed cost, or a corporate level fixed cost. So the corporate level would come into play if you have multiple locations, which we're going to get into in a minute. Uh, but so this for advertising, I set that as a percentage of revenue. And so the model will automatically say, okay, it's going to look each month. What was our revenue? We're going to apply 5% of that towards advertising. For credit card processing fees, that's usually about 3%. Uh, for fuel, 3%. Sales commission. So instead of adding a, a salaried sales em employee, you can just set a percentage of revenue that's going to go towards sales the sales team. And so that kind of is all encompassing. It covers however you end up doing it, whether it's just a commit straight commission or whether you pay a base plus commission, like this is the percentage you're kind of shooting for. And this can vary. I mean, you can decide based on your industry and location and what the market bears, how much you're going to need to pay in terms of uh, sales commission. But um, that that can be a starting point. I, I think for simplicity's sake, I like using the percentage method so that it scales with you as you grow. Vehicle leasing, same idea. You're going to keep adding additional technicians. Instead of coming over here, you could purchase vehicles and you'd need to add in every time you add a new technician, they're going to need their own vehicle. You could add in purchases of vehicles over time. You You could do it that way. But the kind of the elegant way of this vehicle leasing, by doing it as a percentage of revenue, when you add a new technician, they're going to drive more revenue. As they drive more revenue, this vehicle leasing cost is just going to go autom go up automatically in conjunction with that um, increase in revenue. So I really like to to think about it that way. Um, you can also set fixed costs. So you've got things like rent supplies, insurance, these are all per location fixed costs. And then for the salaries here, for a single unit location, I'm just going to have myself as an owner here at paid $75,000 a year. And then let's say I'm hoping to be able to hire a general manager starting in year four. So month 37 here, I'm going to hire this general manager paid 80,000 a year to just run, basically run the day-to-day -day of the business, right? Is the idea. So that is really it on the single unit location. You can kind of see the results here. You have a, a small loss in the first year, but ramping up towards profitability. As you fill this out, what you'll want to do is take a look at your cash flow statement. So come to the cash flow statement. Make sure you look at this row cash at the beginning of the period. You want to make sure that this never goes below zero. If it goes below zero, you're out of money. <laughs> so we don't want to present that to the bank. And so keep keep that in mind. And so if it does go below zero, you need to either increase revenue or decrease expenses somehow, right? Okay, so now I just want to show you real quick what a multi-unit would look like. So I think, again, I think you should send the single unit. If, if you're just starting out, send the single unit version to your lender. But if you want to dream a little bit about what a multi-unit could look like, 
I'll just show you how, how you would fill this out differently then, just real quick. So you can add in location two, three, and four, and let's say you wanna add a new location every 18 months. Let's say you need a second round of equity investment to help you open location two, so you need to invest another 50,000. And you'll notice that this says month one. So why doesn't this say month 18? Because you're, you're opening location two in month 18, right? Well, here's the pretty cool thing that we got built in here. So if you select which location this is referencing, the model's automatically gonna look and say, okay, location two, we know location two doesn't open till month 18. So when I say month one, it's relative to the location opening month. So you can see that right there, relative to the lo location opening month. So that means if you put month one here, that equity investment is gonna come through on month 18 when that second location opens. All right, same, it's the same structure here with the fixed assets. So you can have, you know, leasehold improvements for the offices and the new cities. Again, just put month one, it's gonna reference this and know when you open those locations. Same thing with tools and equipment. You can have a loan for each location. Again, as long as you pick the associated location, you just select month one and you're gonna be good to go on that. Now this table down here, how much cash do I need? This is kind of cool. So it's gonna, it's gonna tell you whether you have sufficient cash to open the location. Now look, based on this, look at all the cash we have available. We don't need to borrow, we don't need to borrow for startup loan location number four. So we could just delete this and it's going to end up taking that out. So you see new debt for, for location. So we're just not going to have any new, new debt or equity. We're just going to use the cash that's available in the business. Okay. And so you can see, yep, we've, we've got the cash available. We don't need to borrow anything here. Right. Um, so that's how that would work. And then really the revenue side is going to be exactly the same. This is just going to know, okay, we opened a new location. It's going to follow this same exact pattern. So this is going to follow the same structure for the second location and the third location. Same thing with this. The only difference would be here. Now let's say, you know, you're going to, you, you've got a, a pest control empire planned here and you're going to need to hire a CEO. And so in month 25, you're going to hire a CEO to help you scale the business. In month 37, you're going to hire a CFO at the corporate level. And then here, you're going to hire a general manager. Maybe you hire a general manager right away each time a new location opens. So month one of each time a new location opens, boom, you're hiring a general manager for that new uh, office location. And then you can kind of see how this ends up. Again, we have kind of a small loss in the first year, but then this ramps up to 3.1 million and you know almost half a million profitability there by the end of year five. All right, so that is it. I'll, I'll leave you at that. But again, as a thank you for sticking around to the end of the video, you can go to the description of the video below and you're gonna find a link to a form. You're gonna fill that form out. And, and when you fill the form out, we're gonna email you our most up-to-date discount code. Use that discount code at checkout to take a discount on this particular template as our thank you for sticking around. And if you have any questions, you need help filling it out, you want to talk about your SBA loan request, uh, feel free to reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com. We'd be happy to help. All right, thanks.